What's up, everybody? It's your boy, John, coming at you with another review, this time of Star Wars The Mandalorian Episode 2. You might note I'm in my car, whoops, <laughs> holding up my phone, as I, as I always do, super professional YouTubing around here, that's what we do. Um, and uh, I'm just low on time today, so we are going to be doing things in between meetings. Uh, lots of big stuff in the development, but that's, that's for another video. All right. Uh, so Mandalorian episode two, a little late on this. Uh, I watched episode one over the weekend. I also watched episode two over the weekend. Uh, just uh, just finally kind of collecting my thoughts on it, making sure I had a good review on it. Um, a lot of my friends right off the bat told me that, uh, oh, 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 we got a uh, got a, a blower in the parking lot here. It's going to be loud. Let's hope it doesn't get too loud. Uh-oh. Well, whatever. You're not here for a, for a, a, a pleasant video experience anyway <laughs> a lot of my friends told me that the mandalorian uh, episode two was very boring not much happened they were very disappointed compared to episode one and so i was primed for disappointment uh and a uh, a solid start to the first episode and a second episode that was going to leave me uh kind of uh not not happy with uh the series and it's true there's not much to the episode uh we have we have it start exactly where it left off uh, the Mandalorian gets back to his ship after this meeting and um, finds that it's being raided by Jawas. I guess we're on Tatooine. I didn't get the indication we were on Tatooine originally, uh, but I, I guess that's where it's set. This, this is the, my main problem with the series is like the setting, because there's so many planets now, there's that Jakku, which is Tatooine, not Tatooine. And all these planets are kind of blending together and looking the same uh, through the Star Wars universe you don't really get a sense of setting out of this. And I mentioned this in the first episode review. You can't really tell uh, when this is set, except for like a little line that Imperial credits are no good. And and it, it, that's kind of bothersome because I'm, I'm trying to just like get my grounding here and I never get that uh, very much. So I guess this is in Tatooine. It was not explicit that it was. I don't know that Jawas are on other de desert planets or what. I have no idea. I, I'm not that far into Star Wars. So if you've read like 50,000 of the, the novels, maybe maybe you know the background on the Jawas and you can leave it in the comments for me. Um, but uh, they took apart a ship. He gets uh, it all, you know, raided. He can't take off. So he chases them down, uh, tries, to, tries to go after them uh, single-handedly and uh, gets his butt kicked because there's just too many of them. And a lot of people are complaining about this, saying, uh, you know, he just kind of gave up and it was terrible. Uh, he got his butt thoroughly kicked. And this is what happens in warfare. I, I know that the movies uh, kind of warp people's reality, but you have one guy going up against 100, 200, 300, however many it is, you're going to lose. Um, I don't care if I don't care who you are or how powerful you are, unless you have a bomb or something, right? It's a different deal. But if you're going in there with a blaster and a laser sword or whatever, you're going to lose. Um, that is uh, that is uh, the unreality of the movies with the whole Jedi and all that stuff. But remember, this guy's not a Jedi. He's just a regular uh, dude. He's a bounty hunter. He's good at what he does. But at the same time, he's got to have that reality. So I found that fine. Um, I, wa I, I enjoyed watching him get humbled a little bit and have having uh, the... Uh, the trope of fail and start again. That's a trope for uh, writing that's, that actually works very well for storytelling, I think. Um, and he goes back and uh, the old man, I can't remember his name, uh, is like, hey, you're, you're handling this wrong. You can't just like run face first uh, with a blaster into everything. And, uh, and he's like, okay, I guess. And so the old man takes him to go trade, right? And, uh, you know, I mean, it's not satisfying for the Mandalorian because, you know, he got his stuff stolen. He then has to trade to get it back, even though it's all his stuff. Uh, it's kind of a grudging thing, but it does, it does a, kind of have a moral to it that the objective is what's the most important part. You, the important part is getting back on your ship, getting things ready, getting it going so you can fly again and, and do your thing because you have more important things to do than deal with this. And that's, that's very true in life. There's a lot of Jawas out there. Uh, who are raiding you, trying to trying to hit you? I get it a lot, uh, you know, just from my YouTube and from my Twitter. It's just like these these little guys, these little guys just snipe at me all the time, um, and sometimes it hurts, and sometimes I got to get back up and do my thing. Um, so I, I actually found this a, a pretty compelling story and a good lesson that like sometimes with the little the little twerps and numbers, uh, you you got to take a different tactic. Very smart, uh, very smart thing right there. 
Um, so I enjoyed that. Um, and then, you know, he ended up having to fight some big monster, basically. Spoilers. Oops. Um, and then we'll get to the other part of this. So the storyline, uh, it was very, it was a short episode. It was like 30 minutes. Um, it was well paced. I wasn't bored. Yes, there wasn't much to it. There wasn't a lot of background where you figure out who the Mandalorian is or glean anything new about this main character or anything like that. Um, but uh, the story served its purpose. Uh, it moved the plot along. He kept going. He did his thing. As an episode two, it was fine. Um, I, I, I don't see any problem with it. Um, I enjoyed it and enjoyed the shootouts and I enjoyed the having to, uh, you know, come up with a different solution and do things. Now, there is a little deus ex machina when he fights this big monster thing, um, and this comes to Baby Yoda. And Baby Yoda is the satisfying part of the story, to be honest. I'm more interested in Baby Yoda than I am interested in the Mandalorian, and I think the entire internet is also. Um, this is the cutest character ever developed in the history of anything. It is very much in line with, like, Lucas Ewoks and, and Lucas, you know, even original Yoda, uh, where he, he introduces these cutesy Muppet elements that are just awesome, and you want to root for it. Um, I, there's something about just like the, the ridiculously cute thing uh, being ridiculously powerful. Um, and it, that that is awesome. And Baby Yoda, uh, it starts out with him attempting to force heal uh, the Mandalorian and him kind of like being like you know, shutting him out. And it was actually a pretty humorous moment early in this in the episode. But uh, eventually Baby Yoda uses his full power to block the attack of uh, the... Uh, big monster giving the uh, Mandalorian a chance to recover and then take the thing down, and that uh, that that's uh, that was the crux of the episode, and I found that eminently satisfying. Um, I have no complaints about that. The, the Baby Yoda element was was the most exciting part of the show. Um, I would prefer the show to be a Baby Yoda show with the Mandalorian as his sidekick rather than the other way around, almost. But then it get you know it would get boring, right? I mean, so this is actually perfectly done. Uh, but honestly, uh, uh, this character's great. Uh, everything about it was great. And uh, I think this was a wonderful episode. I, I totally enjoyed it. Action-packed. This is good pulp. This is a good pulp cereal. Uh, this is exactly what I wanted uh, out of something like this. So uh, I can't complain. So my friends, I think, are wrong. Um, I, I agree there was not much character development and movement on The Mandalorian's part. Uh, there was on Baby Yoda's part, as we see that this, this uh, creature is... Uh, really in tune with the whole force deal, and this is this is becoming much more interesting on that level. Um, I'm sad to see the old man character go. Um, I think uh, that the end where uh, the Mandalorian offered him to be, uh, you know, part of his crew. I think it would have been fun having old man and Baby Yoda juxtaposed, plus the Mandalorian as a crew roaming around the galaxy. Uh, but you know, what, whatever. That's uh, that's just my my take on that. Um, it's fine though. Um, and this is a satisfying series so far. I'm looking forward to the third episode and I think, uh, I think this is really on track. So, uh, I appreciate good storytelling. That's, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. And this was a lot of fun. And I noticed, um, there's also a lot of parallels just between like old Westerns with this too. This is very, like the first episode was really an old Western with the shootout and everything. Um, this one also had some old Western elements to it too. And uh, that's fun. I really hope they continue with that. I think John Favreau might have watched a little Firefly and said this worked, and, and, and tried to incorporate it in. Um, and hey, that's a that's a good idea. Maybe I'll incorporate it into some of my books now. If you like the review and you like my thoughts on writing, you might like my books. Go to Amazon. Check out Justified by John Della Rose. That's me. Um, it's it's a you know sort of Star Wars ish universe, uh, so you probably will enjoy it. And don't forget to like and subscribe uh, so we can get more reviews going, do our whole thing, leave comments about what you think about the episode, and I will see you next time, friends.